grant you the grace to live and enjoy your wealth. May the Lord preserve your life. And may the Lord open your coasts so that abundance will flow into your treasures. In the name of Jesus. Can you say something good to somebody this morning? Good morning. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. And also our special friend and teacher and the person of the Holy Spirit. We salute him this morning. For the word of God says we are two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in their midst. May the Lord preserve our lives. The gifts that he has given to us, may they lead us to joy. May they lead us to expansion. May they lead us to ex up upliftment. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us sit. Drawn from our text this morning, I want to reflect on greed, the thief of life. Greed, the thief of what? Who does not want life? Is there anybody who does not want to life? Everybody wants to live. But there is a thief that can steal your life and cut it short. And one of them is what? Greed. In the parable of Jesus this morning, or in the story of Jesus this morning, the man who came to him was making a claim of what? Inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. Some people have lost their life in pursuit of their inheritance. The land your father bequeathed to you, somebody wants to take it and you put your head. He takes you to court. When he's not satisfied, he takes you to a juju shrine. And what happens? You die. Or in the African, they use African magic to come against you. And what happens? You get sick. And in the process, you do what? You die. Greed. A classmate of mine, we went to seminary, senior seminary together, but somehow out after philosophy, he could not make it to the priesthood. So he went back home and settled, got a job and began to teach. At a point, his brother began to struggle over a piece of land that his father had left for them. And the case went on. The community people judged the case and it fell to him. And so one fateful day, he went to the farm to farm on that land. While he was there, his brother came with matchet and butchered him into pieces in the, in the, in the farm. That was two years ago. He died somewhere from Omerilu. Greed. The chief of what? Life. May that not be your portion. Amen. In our text this morning, there is something that is very significant. The man said, I, I, I have plenty of words. I have plenty of this. So I will destroy what I have and I do what? Build another, and thereafter I will tell my soul, relax now, enjoy, celebrate, drink and eat, make merry, greet, serve, serve, serve. But my dear friends, the blessing of God to this man was for a purpose. Now, but before that, there are four, four fundamental truths I would want to leave us with this morning. One is that God's blessing 
that is established from the scriptures and for humanity is one. Or some fundamental truths about life is that one survival is one challenge of life. And we normally say survival of the world. Survival of the world fittest. And then the second level is comfort. The third one is luxury. And the final one is extravagance. Or if you like, call it abundance. The first level and the last level, which is extravagance or abundance, are not supposed to be for our interest. Because when you are struggling in life, frustration sets in. Despondency sets in. Loss of hope sets in. Lack of trust in God sets in. And possibly you fall away from following God or worshipping God. When you say, well, you say to yourself, this can't suffer while they suffer for what? Self, you don't do it in too much. And so you want to pack out. Then the last level, which is extravagance. The level of extravagance, when you are excessively rich, you no longer remember God and you fail to give honor to God, who is the supplier of everything that we have. And that was the problem of the rich man or the man who had excessive wealth from his farm. Now, the other two levels, the level of comfort, where whatever you need is available without options. You are able to pay children's school fees. You are able to buy a car. You are able to buy a land. You are able to build a house. You are able to go to the market, get what you want for daily survival and all that, and do your business. You are comfortable. And you are what? Happy. Can you tell yourself, can you tell somebody, be happy? Because God loves you. And then the other one, the level of luxury, this is where, fine, you can expand. You can expand your business. You are able to attend to things. Things of two, three hundred thousand comes. You run in, in out, and, and you are able to solve that problem. One million and above, and all that. Your life is stable. So you have financial security. This is what God wants for us. But my dear friends, in the midst of all these blessings from God, God has a reason for giving us this. Because God's blessings on us are supposed to help us attain some level of serenity in life. And when you attend those things, then you'll be able and disposed to worship him better. And so God's blessing to us, like he gave to this man, is one, to make him comfortable. The first beneficiary of every blessing from God is who? You. The first constituency that enjoys God's blessing is what? I. You. Second, why God blesses you and gives you abundance or gives you comfort and luxury is that you get engaged in kingdom establishments and upliftment. Using what God has blessed you to work for what? God. In our text this morning, the man failed to do that. He was concerned about what? Himself. I will break down my ban. He did not even remember those who worked for him. The third aspect of God's blessing to you is for others. Upliftment of others, enrichment of others, helping others. When these fail, then you are failing. You are not being a good steward. Then greed sets in because everything you will be doing will be about your what? Yourself. And when it's that way, then there's trouble because you will not want to help anybody. There are some people, 
God bless them, they don't want to do what? Help anybody, even their siblings, even their friends. They come knocking at their gates. They check through the CCTV camera and they said, tell them I am not available. Or the person comes at your gate and sits down all day without you having to do what? Help the person because you have become greedy. And when it is that way, you fail in these dimensions. One, that all good things come from God. You fail to be conscious of it because of greed. Greed blindfolds you to realizing that every gift that you have gotten comes from who? God. Sorry, the person in the media room, I'd like you to put for us James chapter 1 verse 17. Where it says, every gift comes from God. Every good gift comes from God. And this gift of God is for edification. It says, every good gift and every perfect present comes from what? Heaven. It comes down from God, the creator of the heavenly light, who does not change or cause darkness by what? Turning. So it's a gift of God. And then this gift of God, like the psalmist will establish in Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2, it says, all things are made by God. It is he who has founded them upon the foundations of the earth. And the deep oceans are the source of every good thing that comes from God. And then the psalmist in Psalm 50 verses 10 and 11 will again establish that fact. That everything that is created, all the wild animals, every animal on the thousands of hills come from God. And because they come from God, our response will be that we also attribute them to God by giving honor to the author of all these that are created for our good. Otherwise, we fail. And the product or the reason why we fail to attribute these gifts back to the owner is the fact that greed has overtaken us. As it happened in our text, in the gospel text of this morning. And then another dimension that we must also be conscious of is the fact that every gift is from God or every achievement that you make in life, whether in money, in material possession, or even academic excellence and height that you have attained in life is not an achievement, but it is a thrust. Can I hear everybody say thrusts? So you are a steward. But greed will blindfold us to realize that we are what? Stewards. First Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 says that we are made stewards of the good things that God has given. So it is not yours, but rather it is permitted to you on trust. That's why the text of scripture this morning calls that man, you fool. He called him fool because he did not realize that what he was given was a what? A trust. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I come and give you something and say, hold this thing for me, is it your own? If you want to take it, what are you? You are a thief. They are a what? Somebody came to my office sometime either last week or thereabouts. He said, in fact, he was crying. Somebody that he put in his house. I think he made him a caretaker. The first year passed, he refused to pay rent. Second year passed, he refused to pay rent. Third year passed, he refused to pay rent. Fourth year passed, he refused to pay rent. He wrote him, instead of responding to the fact that he has refused to pay rent, then he sued him to court. And then the case has been on and on 
The man who now owns the house is even afraid of the man. He was crying. At the point, my spirit got so bad, I said, bro, see, sometimes everything is not being civil. I said, who owns the house? The man has taken to police station several times. He wants to take the man. In fact, everybody in the vicinity sees him as the owner of the house and not the owner of the house. He has taken him to police station severally such that everybody knows that this man is a troublemaker and he's still living in his house. You know where I told him? I said, bro, every case, sometimes in certain cases, you don't have to be civil. Get prepared. Sue him to court. He said there is a case in court. I said, fine. They have gone severally. When he was trying to wriggle out of that one, he used his sister to come and make trouble in the house and accused him of destroying his house and then stealing some money. So he was making claims on his landlord. Praise the Lord. If it is you, what will you do? What will you do? He was crying. I said, bro, see, what do you need to do? One morning, behave like a madman. Carry axe. Break his door. But make sure he's in the house when you are breaking his door. Break the window of the house. Pack out his things at that instant. Then go to police and report. Let them come and take assessments. Then he is not in your house. When he's not in your house, people can be making case and going to court. And then let's see how, who wins. Praise the Lord. I think Father, they talk bad things this morning. <laughs> Amen. There is one thing my people say. My people say that Adi ribe okolo laya ndeke no na ha ama kwoshelo ni soon eh when you don't begin to when you if you don't start eating the pumpkin that has returned from the market the ones that are there will stop will not stop what coming because they know that when they come they will be eating so eat the ones that are available so that it will send a signal sometimes it's not always peace how can you put somebody in your house and he's taking out of greed, he wants to possess your house. No, now. Take the law into your hand, then go back and report yourself to the law. Because he, when he is out of the accommodation, he will not have the power and strength to make case with you. So every time, every time, you will not always say, God, come and help me. God has already helped you. Make use of your wisdom. But this is a product of what? Greed. Because if you don't take it at that point, it will destroy you. And so my dear brothers and sisters, today, the Lord designs a blessing for us. But that blessing must be ascribed to God. That blessing must be used to exalt God's name. That blessing must be used for kingdom advancement. You must use it to work for God. And then you must use it to help others. Greed does not acknowledge God. Greed kills relationship. Because the two brothers we are fighting over what? Inheritance. The first person out of greed had cornered everything that their father had left. He did not mind the relationship he had with his brother. And so the relationship died and problem started. And then my classmate I just mentioned, his brother murdered him in the farm because of a piece of wood land. Another story was told of a man he got money and he bought 40 acres of land. But after looking at that land, he felt it was small and so he needed to acquire more. He sold the 40, added money to what he had and bought 80 acres of land. But after looking at it, at what he wanted, he felt it was not sufficient. 
And so a friend of his came to him and said, there is a community that lives after the mountain. They live a free life. They live simple life, but they have plans that they want to give out to anybody who can. He was joyful. The next day he went to that land, to that community, and he told them, he met the chief, and the chief told him, yes, but on a condition. The condition is this. We will pin something at this point. Move as much as you can get to. But you must come back before sunset to that pot, spot you started. He said, no problem. And so that morning, as soon as they saw the sun, they pinned and he started moving. He kept on moving and then some persons were guiding him with horse. They kept moving and moving and moving and moving. He covered a large expanse of land. And then, because he wanted more. So in the process, he then discovered that the sun had started changing, started going down. So he had to turn from where he was very far. And then he began to come back and began to run and run and run and run and run and run. And at the point the sun was about to set, he got to that point. But he fell with his face on the ground. The chief went to him and said, you've done well, my dear friend. They turned him, he was dead. Greed. Greed. Greed makes us to fight and quarrel. That's why James chapter 4 verse 1 following say, many of you, you quarrel and fight because you don't even know how to ask. And even when you ask, you have the wrong intention. He says, turn to God, depend on God. And that's the exhortation of St. Paul to us this morning in the second reading. He says, where do all these fights and quarrel among you come from? They come from your desire for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. What is the quarrel between brothers and brothers? What is the quarrel in Nigeria? What is the quarrel in, between Ukraine and Russia? What is the quarrel between America and uh, Russia? What is the quarrel between world powers? The greed and the desire to acquire much power. But of all this, none would go with you. What is it that we are leaving for somebody else? Most times, everything we struggle for in this life ends up there and off we go. Dear friends, today the Lord exhorts us. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven and every other thing will be words added unto you. For that is the only thing that will go with you to the beyond. I think sometime this week, precisely on Wednesday, we went to bury my friend and a classmate of mine who died, a priest, who went in to sleep in the afternoon. The cook did not cook on time, he took a stroll around the church compound and then went in to rest and told him, when you are done, call my attention so that I can eat. And so father went in and lay down and slept. The cook set the food. One o'clock, he was not up. Two o'clock, he was not up. Three o'clock, he was not up. Unusual with him. Four, he was not up. Five, Ah, the boy became concerned. Walked to the room and saw him lying cold. He just finished his doctorate in Siwa. He has not collected his certificates. The nothingness of life. Let greed not allow your life to go away. Remember, there is only one thing that goes with us. The joy and the relationship we have with the Lord. Self-entity is what the Lord desires of us. Peace be with you.